Hello folks and welcome to day 85. The health is good but it says that uh, you should use a keyframe of two seconds or less. Is it going to be another one of those nights? Am I actually streaming? I can get away with it, I'll stay here but if not I'll have to come back. I'll just wait to see what you folks are saying. How's the stream coming out? Apparently it looks really... I'm showing a big red sign here, so I might have to sign it, pop back in in a second. I'll just wait for the comments. Hi, John. Yeah, I do too, Sergeant. Hi, Broken Ass. Uh, yo, hi, Kate. Is the stream going? Is that okay, folks? That's okay, eh? We can get away with that tonight. Hi, folks. My stream coming out. It's all good. Okay, we'll keep going with that. It's showing me a keyframe frequency of two seconds or less discrepancy, but I know I set it to one second and let me get that screen up here now it's saying 3.1 seconds whatever it's streaming stream's fine hi folks oh, i love your comments look at them roll what a circus that was today oh my goodness yeah that looks okay i'll get rid of that that's awesome thank you everyone uh, and so the comments on the inside never showed up yet. Comments on the inside never showed up yet. Here we go. So, you got a little peek at the new place. And I just, you know, that's me anyway. That's what I'm doing. And if I was to go at this hardcore, which I'm going to go at, then I'm going to need a 300 foot boat. I'm going to need float planes, helicopters, submarines. I'm going to need people who can run all of this. I can't do it. I can organize it. I got other, I got to be doing other things for sure. Web studio interviews, professors, anybody can call in uh, right away, that kind of stuff. But ultimately, in the very quick, this part of the future, if I was to go at it, I'm not sure if that's what I'm going to do or not, but if I'm going to go at it hard, which is the right thing to do and the smart thing to do and I'm capable of it and you know I need a 300 foot boat I need something that can go out there and locate those big plumes that are coming our way I need something to go out there and find all the dead animals if that's what's out there and then we can deal with it and we need someone that's independent to go verify we need float planes to get out there and find that all those you know a couple of million tons of houses and bodies and everything else that's coming our way because uh, you got to remember that tsunami went right through that prefecture for a long time there was a lot of water went past that site and become radiated during uh, the tsunami itself you got to that site was full of 238 and so uh, that stuff is a concern whether anybody wants to admit it or not uh, because otherwise they turned off all the detectors on the coastlines of Canada and the United States. They turned their back on us. We got nobody out there that'll do this. We got nobody out there with the capability and the skills to do it that's active and trying to do it. And the more I think about it, the more I realize that this is a big thing to do. Though. That's, that's huge. If I, if I go down that road, that's huge. And we could do that, and that's what we, we we need to do. That's what we, you know, normal circumstances would be done, right? And by people that we feel we can trust. And to tell you the truth, I can't. I don't feel I can trust anything that's out there right now. I can't find it. Send it to me, right? I want to see it. <laughs> if you can know somebody out there like that. And how else are we ever going to know? We we're going to put our fate in these figures, these lawyers, these manipulators, these very, the very people 
that knew and then made it a secrecy and national security? Is that the people we put our faith in too? That'd be pretty uh, reckless, right? That's a problem. It's bad enough doing what I'm doing now, and now that I'm thinking about doing something like that is amazing. Because I realize that's got to get done. And who the frig is going to do it? Who can we trust to do it? I can't trust Greenpeace. I can't trust any of the organizations out there. And then I can't really trust it unless I'm there too, on top of that. So that's a bit of a dilemma. Right, I want to go down in that submarine and see it with my own two eyes. I want to go down and videotape it and stream it live. Right, I want to go out there and find the big plumes with the Geiger counters. And I want to beam that up into a satellite and then beam it out live to you folks on YouTube. Or wherever. Live. 24-7. The whole bloody show. And there's, like, you got to think about it. There's 26,000 islands just up here. It would take you 71 years to go visit every one of those islands. One a day. It'll take you uh, 71 years. 26,000 islands. A lot of these islands are 50 miles. And so now you're talking about all kinds of things. And so, like, I know when I go on the ocean, that's the whole point. That anywhere I look, I can see birds diving. And feeding. And because I used to jump in the ocean all the time to see what they were feeding on and what was driving them up there. It'd be killer whales or sea lions or porpoise, or in the later years, when the warmer water came into the coastline, it'll be halibut, or I'm sorry, um, tuna, which normally would only find 150 miles off the coastline, that started showing up, uh, you know, chasing herring up in the balls and stuff like that. And, or, and so I've seen a lot of that, you know, they're feeding on squid, they're feeding on, feeding on just a little feeder, the sardines, they're feeding on it's just uh, some 50 different species of rockfish up here. But generally, the mackerel, the herring, the fries uh, was what I was seeing, particularly squid. And you would see porpoise. You would see it all, uh, no matter where you looked. No matter where you looked, you would see the birds feeding. And I, I spent three, you know, 315 days a year, year after year. And so when you see the ocean is broken and you've never seen a bird for 3,000 miles, to me that is unimaginable. To me that is inconceivable. That is impossible. I don't want to hear those words again. I want to go see it myself. And so that's how I feel. And that's why I'm doing the things I'm doing. Um, because we live in that time, that place, where we're the only generation that has this opportunity and probably will ever will be the only generation that ever had this opportunity and do we seize that opportunity or do we wait for these fuckers to develop the robots where there's no ethics and morals right where there's perimeters where there's ones and zeros because that's common right and that'll be the ultimate control then Right, and we're being set up for that, for what can ever survive all that radiation that's coming. I mean, we got three melter reactors. Chernobyl is one third the size of any other reactor, or um, was one third of the size of any of the reactors at uh, Fukushima. Fukushima's reactors are three times the size of Chernobyl. Look at that. And then it was a hundred percent meltdown at Fukushima for each of those three reactors, one, two, and three. And number four reactor was a detonation and the fuel pools caught on fire two different times and there's the fire releases down below. The emails, they're redacted a lot of it. And then below that is pictures, over 2,000 pictures from TEPCO's website, 99 downloads clearly labeled. Right? You don't have to listen to anything I'm saying. You go read those emails, go look at those pictures, they're marked for the buildings, the surrounding areas. The damage from the tsunami, the damage from the earthquake, the damage from the detonation is all right there for you. You don't need me. What I'm doing is I'm, you know, I'm a voice that's out there trying to make sure that everybody gets a fair shake on what's really truly going on there. Everybody gets a chance and the ability to understand it. 
have to pay attention for a little bit and then they can go look at everything that's available and find more but I got some of the best stuff there going for you you know I got a documentary down there of Chernobyl and it showed the people and this is real good stuff folks the real deal and it shows the, 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 the liquidators that's what they were called going out on the roof of Masha one of the hottest parts of the roofs and it was around 10 to 12 thousand rankings and a couple of hundred will kill you you'll die within two weeks so what's 10 and 12 thousand going to do to you well they would run out there for uh, 15 to 20 seconds originally for first I'm not sure a week or two weeks until they made a pad big enough they can stay out there a bit longer and by and by they were able to stay out there for quite a while but that first wave of soldiers that were burnt up and thrown away so to speak they would go out there for 15 or 20 seconds and go home and go home and in Fukushima they go and get the homeless the destitute the most vulnerable of society the victims of society and bring them in there and not give them any indication not give them any kind of equipment not give them any kind of uh, health uh, benefits after and just throw them away like trash and so that alone tells you how bad it is, right? That should tell you everything you ever needed to know. That when they're doing stuff like that, it has to be the worst possible case scenario ever imaginable. Because when you take it into comparison, what they've done at Chernobyl, but what a lot of people don't understand was that Unit 3 at Fukushima was, too, it was MOX fuel, uh, uranium plutonium, of a really bad mixture of uh, milled, X nuclear weapons that were already highly um, they already went through a chain reaction once so they were and so even the stuff that's in the spent fuel pools that are missing down there's 122,000 rods in each fuel pool there was 1535 bundles and 80 rods in the bundles the rods are 12 feet long and a piece the size of a banana if I was to pass it to every person uh, will kill every person on this planet just a piece that big and a gram of that, the size of that, produces more radioactive atoms, hot atoms, hot particles, and just a small particle. But then all the grains of sands on all the beaches on the planet, just a gram of it. And there was 122,000 pools of this up there. And these pools detonated, uh, three of them, and the, and the four one had a detonation, but we don't know, but it is 100% meltdown. They can't get in it because it's so toxic. It's unimaginable. It's a death dose. And they probably can't get inside of it for a couple of hundred years. They're supposed to put a sarcophagus over it uh, for a couple of hundred years and wait for the radiation to reduce itself by about 10. Uh, and so they're not able to do that because these are melted cores, 100%. Chernobyl was a 30% meltdown. It was one third the size. It was graphite. These things are... Mox fuel and weapon noise. All of them had plutonium in it. Every one of these buildings had plutonium in it. I got that as a fact. And this is weaponized. Once again, once it goes through the processing and the chain reaction, even though it's what they call spent fuel, it still has a half-life of 4.5 billion years. And that a Dixie cup of it will kill everybody, or just a cup of it, a little bowl of it will kill everybody in a restaurant, McDonald's, every hour for a billion years, for 4.5 billion years times 10, so 45 billion years. So the half-life and then it decays into another radioactive isotope, another radioactive isotope, but it leaves half, and then it leaves a quarter, and an eight, and a sixteenth, and 32. But still, then the other isotopes, radioisotopes are doing the same thing, so it's the times 10. So like iodine-129, which is produced, you produce three iodine-131, and then it's an iodine-129. And that lasts for 15 million years as a half-life, so that's 150 million years half-life. Right, and so they hide it away by talking about iodine-131 uh, 131, how it dissipates after eight days, right? But you always got to remember, for every three of them, there has to be one iodine-29. They didn't just travel by themselves, right? The uranium didn't just stay over there, so there's uranium. So when you see big numbers, there has to be... A, just as big or bigger of uranium and plutonium and strontium and cesiums. And you can't have cesium without 30 times more strontium, right? 
but they always wanted to equate it with the natural background radiation of bananas. Now the natural background radiation of anything, whether it's bananas, which might have a little bit more, could be 7,000 becquels, disintegrations per second, but they're insignificant, everything on this planet. So if I eat a banana, I off-gas 7,000 becquels of potassium-40, which is not in E equals mc squared. It's got nothing to do with E equals mc squared. That's the whole problem. They keep using like the background radiation of the ocean as an equation that fits in E equals mc squared. You can't weaponize the ocean. That's not what they do. And so it's such a it's such a, a huge flaw that the system is out there talking about potassium forty and seven or eight thousand becquels a second disintegrations that are insignificant. That everything on the planet can't exist. That you know, as you take in food with these kind of becquels, you off gas that. There's it's like a thermostat. It's like the cruise control on your car, right? Where it regulates. You know, that's a known phenomenon. And so that, but those isotopes don't belong in the equation. I could fill the room up with bananas, it's not going to kill me. I can fill the room up with ocean, and as long as I got the air to breathe, I'm fine. But I won't get cancer or something like from, you know, I can take a bath in ocean water every day. Right? And this is what we're up against all the time, where to keep repeating this stuff. It's got nothing to do with uranium 234, uranium 235s. It's got nothing to do with melted reactors and the fact that the reactors were built on a hundred foot of topsoil and that the explosions went out there and deposited the stuff in the topsoil so every time it rains and snows it washes that down into the old river bed and the river washes it out into the ocean and that there's three melted cores down there that are raging infernal stars on our planet that are never going to stop apparently they don't. They got all these fantasies. They come up with all these exotic uh, that they're going to do this and that they're going to do that and science this and science that. And they've been dumping radioactive material in the ocean for 70 years because they tell you all these lies that they can develop technology to contain it. And even in the last 70 years, they haven't developed anything to contain it. The containing it means the isotope doesn't get loose. And the fact that it's sitting in the cooling pools those pools are boiling off and so it's releasing all that isotope and that's being vacuumed up and pumped out into the ocean. It's the oldest, most disgusting thing on the planet that's destroying our planet. And now that we have these melted reactors and Japan won't let anybody near it and they're using the most vulnerable of society to go deal with it, it's absolutely amazing. And let me flip back for a second and remind uh, anybody that's not aware that I posted a, tried to post a video today and four times in a row my computer froze solid, same computer you're watching right now, and I couldn't get any, I've never seen that, this computer only gets used and the microphone, with the microphone for the live stream and nothing else. I do the updates, uh, I always keep it tuned up. There's nothing running in the background. I always have the processes running so I know what's running in the background. There's nothing extra running on it. And every time I try to live stream from the studio today, it froze up. And I would end up pulling the battery. And so the first video that I got out there is still out there. I don't know where it's to. It's not in my... I can't find it, but I've seen people talking about it. And I'll probably find it to the comments later on when I get a chance to check. But then I got a video up there, and then the video froze itself on YouTube and it, it just doesn't seem now the new studio is twice as fast speeds as what I got here and um, we were using our phones like blistering speeds um, I've never seen that before everybody agreed and the quality of the like the pictures were unbelievable like the videos totally different with that super high speed that's, that's business speed and so we got the international telephone there, and we're still painting. We're still got a lot of work. It's going to take at least another week or something to get most of that work done down there. But it's hardcore. We got all the scaffolding going there, all kinds of paint, gallons and gallons. And so we'll be able to take phone calls with you guys, doing what we're doing now, right? And that's pretty cool. And I think 
you know, we're ready now for the next stage where we can bring in professors and we can bring in, we can go out and find the people that are spreading the nonsense and we can get them for an interview, I'm sure. Or we can call them up and ask them anyway. Right? So we can coordinate that stuff because we can come on different times of the day if we got to. And it'll be interesting to get these people and see if we can hold them a little bit accountable and get them to stop saying bananas or ocean and stuff like that and lying and manipulating. Because nothing can change till we stop at least the, the, you know, these constant typical lies. They've been using us so long they don't have nothing else. And so they've stuck for that for so long. That means all we got to do is snuff that shit out and they're in a lot of trouble. Right? Everybody is... Um, everybody is uh, pretty sick of hearing bananas now. Everybody's ready to snap when you hear the word bananas. And so it still looks like the stream is okay. Everything looks like it's normal. Let me double check. I'll pop over, open up the stream. And so... Like, it's either we find people to go out and do this. Yeah, it's streaming okay. Good stuff. So we got two options. Is we go out and find it, and deal with it, identify it, and force them to go deal with it. Force them to do the ethical thing. Because what other option have we got again? If we sit back and let them come try to tell us what's what's coming, what's not coming, obviously that's not a fact. Because they say you got all the models showing all the cesium landing all over the country and all they want to talk about is iodine with an eight day half life and then equate everything else with a banana. Why why their children are being poisoned. Um I can't do that, right? That's a, that's our problem is we got this system that it, since Fukushima's happened, has been repeating the same laws to the point now where they believe them to be true. Uh, but you can't have a debate. And so we need to have this debate. We need to do it ourselves, is what I'm saying. And that's a huge thing. I don't know how I'm going to pull that one off. Or who the hell is going to pull it off if I don't pull it off. Um, that are going to be committed and forthcoming and are not going to be manipulated or decept deceptive or deceitful right that's got integrity and unfortunately what that means is I got to end up doing it and so that means I got to stay on the west coast for a lot longer than I want to then I feel it's safe to because to make sure the job gets done but I'm confident that I could deal with the tumors that you can't avoid anyway, that I can keep them under control from my knowledge. And so, like, I, in one sense, you know, that's hard. Because going out there and playing around in radiation, right, that's it. It's going to be hard to get people to do something like that. And if you don't lead by example, and I can't do everything, so... How else were we going to find out is the question. And that's something i got to face over the next couple of weeks. Of, and I, I, I don't feel that i got a lot of time to wait to go find out. Because you can have a Philippine storm show up as the concentration increases. And certainly the, we know that it made it about halfway across the ocean in the first uh, 100 days. And so that's quite the revelation. And that would mean it had no problem making it right across the ocean. Now, you got to realize the jet stream was bringing it across and depositing it in the first three or four days. So there definitely would have been, and this is high concentrations of MOX fuel. And so think of the, uh, of the, uh, the radioactive particles falling out of the sky into the ocean like a snowstorm. Think about what a snowstorm truly looks like. Think about that falling down through the ocean. And then think about, that's putting out energy all the way down, and that's killing all the phytoplankton, right, the backbone of the industry, in a snowstorm. In just a single snowstorm over a sustained snowstorm of two or three weeks. Now, what happens is the cold water usually brings nutrients up to the surface, and that feeds the phytoplankton, right? 
And that's the, the cycle of life, the very cycle of life. Because without that happening, nothing else works. Everything else, right? Because everything else is dependent upon the phytoplankton as the baseline feeder. But they're also the baseline oxygen maker. And because that stuff fell down to the sediment, don't think it just stopped and gave up. Okay? Don't. Because it doesn't. And so it's putting out constant energy. These are hot particles. A lot of this wouldn't have even got salutable. Right? So a lot of this would just get carried all the way across in the breezes because it was the salt water, the sulfur. And there's studies down below about that. And so that's something that I've always thought about. How much damage was done to the ocean in that snowstorms of, ra of really mad radioactive particles originally, not counting the hemorrhaging into the ocean and the plumes that are coming stuff, right? I'm just talking about the snowstorm that came and filled up the ocean. Because when you think about a gram, is more grains of sand or more radioactive atoms than all the grains of sand and all the beaches on the planet, then how much is in a 12-foot rod and how much is in a bundle, how much is in a pool, how many of those pools are missing and aerosoled, how much was in the reactors and was aerosoled and made its way that way. The hot particles made it all the way to the west coast. That means it would have made it all the way 1,200 miles out into the ocean and fell in the ocean and then got carried over and got carried up in the jet stream at the same time from that point. See? If they can make it all the way to the west of Japan, then they would have went 1,200 miles in the air out to the ocean and, you know, settled down. But lots of it at that point, of course, would have been super, uh, you know, the one ten thousandth of a millionth of a meter and made it up into the atmosphere, into the ionosphere, and the troposphere. And that will circumvent the planet many times over. We've seen the dispersal models from the government of 40 days of cesium-137, you can't have 137 without 30 times more strontium-90, right, which really gets absorbed into the body. And of course, this stuff hangs low. And so when the plumes were coming through, the kids were going to school, they should have kept the kids home that day. If they have a snowstorm, they'll keep the kids home, right? If they have freak winds, they'll keep the kids home. But if it's a toxic, carcinogenic, highly dangerous radioactive particles now let them go out and play in the playground we don't care we'll get our check on friday and we'll just close our ears uh, but they that they won't get no pension because this system won't stay together long enough as the cancer shows up they've been fogging here for the last two days and two days they came in my door and two days the fog is everywhere is non-stop from daylight to dark and you it's particles now I'm from the East Coast where you get 120 days a year of fog fog is the result of light refracting off moisture well this morning that doesn't quite work the same way in this stuff you can walk up to it you can't walk up to fog but you can walk up to this stuff and this stuff will cross the temperature barriers and come into your home and doesn't leave any moisture, right? And so that's a quite an unusual one uh, again. And the, what the point is, is every country has a mitigation of where they aerosol particulates in order to, to get to join on to um, the radiation, which is electrically charged or negatively charged, uh, and so that. They, they, they stick together and that weighs it down. Now the point being is that if the ocean's coming along and there's high concentrations and they put enough particles in the air, then it can't come get out of the ocean very far. It gets knocked back down. Then it doesn't make it into your gardens. and So that's the most twisted thing you can imagine when particles in your ear is actually a good thing. Right? That's the, the complete flip of what anybody can even conceive, even including myself. But for logic, that's how it works, right? They put out enough particles so it doesn't rise up and you ingest them. And in our case, because the plume is coming by and it might be really contaminated stuff and they're terrorized, this is the mitigation that every country will do 
to spray particulates, aggregates, agents from uh, planes and helicopters. Uh, yes, my friends, we're talking about chemtrails. Uh, because of the massive release onto this planet of uh, dirty bombs and radioactive materials. And they're going to boot me off here for talking about that one. Pretty cool. Well, they've been doing that here in British Columbia uh, for two days straight. For two days straight, they've been fogging the coastline artificially, artificially to uh, knock radiation out of the air. This is what they've been doing all along. I got videos on my site where I documented 178 days of no sunshine, not even through the clouds. And uh, next year was 128 days, I think, of no sunshine in a row on the Sunshine Coast because of artificial clouds that they make um, with planes. That was made, allegedly, that's supposed to be for global warming, right? And they're going to reflect the sunlight back into the sky, is what they say. But I contend, strongly, that it's not only to build buffers to stop clouds, radioactive clouds, from coming in on your coastline and depositing high-level radiation, because you got to think about the tens of thousands of miles of clouds that are made in the radiated Pacific Ocean every day and that make their way onto the continent. And that will, you know, so many people getting Geiger counters are going to show up repeatedly because it's cumulative, right? So all the radioactive rain, rain out, rainfall and continuous rainfall from the particulates that went up into the uh, troposphere and ionosphere because it takes them a long time to all come back down if they ever do, 10 years for sometimes. But because there's so many particles, there's more particles in the grains in a gram than there is like the size of a dime of cesium than all the sands, the grains of sands and all the beaches on the planet. That's a phenomenal amount of radioactive particles. And these are hot particles. These are made from after the chain reaction and everything else and the spent fuel pools and stuff like this. So it's extraordinary toxic, unimaginably carcinogenic and dangerous. And cancers don't show up overnight. Cancers don't show up usually in a year or two, but unless you're in Fukushima, they can show up pretty fast. But there has been, cesium goes right into your heart also. So it can cause a heart attack and has been known to and is documented and that's part of the dangers of the cesium-137. But you got to realize, once again, that whenever you see the word cesium-137, it's 30 times more strontium-90, right into the muscles, right into the bones, guaranteed cancers, serious cancers, hardcore chemo uh, therapy is not going to help you because that's the opposite of what you're supposed to do. There's links below to DCA, and DCA is a natural mineral, and it unplates your blood, and it doesn't hurt good cells. Chemotherapy kills all your cells, and if one single cancer cell survives, and you do too, then you'll get cancer again. But if you don't attack your normal cells, and you only attack your bad cells, what happens? You get rid of it. And see, there's no money in cures. And this, there's peer-reviewed studies about this. They've been repeated. Uh, it's no pharmaceutical. There's no patent on that stuff. There's also dandelion tea, which puts all the minerals in your body. Every mineral, every nutrition your body needs. And you can eat the flowers. You can eat the leaves. And you can eat the stalks. You can use the stalks to boil your vegetables in, to boil your pet food in. You can use the stalks to get bats in. You can put it in a pipe and smoke it. You can uh, get turmeric. Turmeric has 600 peer-reviewed academic studies. And you can eat that. That's one of the most healthiest things out there. 600! Well, actually, 700 peer-reviewed studies on a, pro on a spice that's so good for you that there's over 700 different studies on it. How cool is that? And then water, natural water is a different structure than the water that got treated with chlorine or treated at a water facility and thrown through palms and banged down pipes, right? And that's another thing, is as the radioactive particle falls out, uh, you know, look at your water supply. 
If you were to go into your local watersheds and start taking radioactive readings, that might be a good idea. Uh, we got I got a story there of in San Francisco. They were dressed in a um, in a containment suit to go check the the beckles of the water at the local water. I have to dig that one out after. DCA, there's a link below. You should know, Sam. I've only said it every night since you've been here. You sure you were here? Because I've said it every night. Hi, Aviator. Hi, Eleven. Broken Eleven. Brack Bray Eleven. Not easy. The military is the reason for nukes. We must stop just for our own survival. Adbex, send me yours to my inbox. Okay. Aqua123, this is in my friend, good night. Gary Miller, about 100 kilometers away, the jet stream. Penny Miller, country girl here, hi Penny. Stacy Anderson, thank you Dana. Oh, you're welcome Stacy. I say thank you. Uh, and still, if you see planes, chemical trailing, when you notice the clouds over the next day, I got knocked off it. Grouchy eats his, uh, hi Grouchy, eats turmeric. Do you eat it like on marshmallows? Do you eat it like in bananas? The counter, the potassium, 40, that terrible. Like I say, we should have a big burning party and burn all the bananas on the planet so they can't say it no more. Hi Mike, can you roll it? <laughs> yeah, I bet. Christopher, Annabeck, Tog Nash. Has to make is looking. Yeah, it's such a great one, make. Yeah. Coca Cola water. <laughs> yeah, it is. I know. Uh, who did I miss that time, Sam? Uh, I'm going to spend uh, a few minutes to see a few people. He almost says hash and infuses joints all day. You don't find hash in this neck of the woods, unfortunately, it's everywhere else. Checks and balances, it will show up after. Stacy says, you, Domino, I've missed out on something. I kind of got, yeah, I got lost on it. Don't call me Professor Sam, thanks. My name's Dana. My, my name on my side is not Beautiful Girl by Professor, it's Beautiful Girl by Dana. Yeah, I don't like nicknames. You can smoke banana pills. I tried it when I was young. And I can't remember, so... Let me see if I can find something. No the uh, business. None of your business. He can wait. Just want to make sure Dana gets message. I'll go looking. But it's hard to get a message if I don't see it. But let me try for a second. Let me drag it down. Uh, okay. I'm probably not going to find it. Uh, DC Babu, Aviator Mike, Sydney. Yeah, Tokyo's completed, Mike, or Sydney. Uh, just look and see if we can find anything here, folks. I can't hold on to the stream, it just keeps so many comments, which is awesome. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to keep up with it that way. Very moving show. Yeah, I passed it. Well, look, uh, what we got to do is we got to make a stand. That's what we're doing here right now. It's not enough. We need action. I'll show you some freaking action. I'll show you some freaking action. We're going to get those triggers right where we want them. All right? That's what we're, we're going to get them and give them what they deserve. And if we go out there, we put together an operation, and we're going to do their job. Right? We'll leave chunks of them everywhere. We'll leave chunks of them everywhere. I'm sorry, Pinhead. 
That's our radiation dummy. But what we got to realize is they're not going to do their job. They had every opportunity we gave them. Every friggin' nickel they could ever want. We gave them everything. We gave them the biggest planes. We gave them satellites. We gave them institutions and universities. Our children. We gave them three peer review academic studies. Every minute. Thousand pages. A thousand hours. Thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars. Day after day. 1,440 minutes in a day. 4,800 peer review studies every day. And you can't even solve the simplest of fucking problems. Excuse the language. What are we supposed to do? Sit here and wait for them to work it out? They ain't trying. They don't give a shit. The last thing they want you to know about is the Philippines. There's a link below. The last thing they want you to know about is Tonga. There will soon be a link below. The last thing they want you thinking about is that you're empowered and that you could do this yourself and that they are irrelevant. That they are the dinosaurs, the chicken necks, and the traitors. And the, the dummies, the absolute dummies, the most idiotic thing imaginable, hiding away, thinking they're going to be stuck at their pensions. Because that's just going to make it worse. This is not something that can go away. This is something that we have to deal with. This is something we got to try to fix and come together. Like, I mean, we got to put nutrition back in friggin' food. What a novel idea. Because GMO has no nutrition in it. It's that simple. That's an act of good faith, isn't it? After they put these monsters in jail, who done took all the nutrition out of the food, right? We need acts of good faith before we can ever trust them again. Giving everybody DCA tablets to deal with the tumors and the cancers, and giving everybody nutrition because they took it all out of the food and not telling them and, and taking that out of our shops. That would be a sign of good faith. Stop the endless wars. That would be a sign of good faith. They have no intentions of doing it because we won't demand it. And demanding is not done by walking in the streets. It's done by running in the streets. And that can happen when you have an informed population. There's that. They're nothing. They're nothing. We're a thousand to one. You know, we're probably ten thousand to one in reality. But we're a thousand to one. If we turn on them. And they know that. We're the power. We're the, we're the righteous ones. This is They're not going to do their job. It's our responsibility to go do it ourselves. Right? It's not to sit around and wait for somebody else. Well, I'm that somebody else. Okay? Okay, I'm man enough. I'll do the job. We'll do the job. It's not me. I can't do it by myself. But if that's what it takes, and that, that is... If that's what we need for someone we can trust, that are at least going to get to the bottom of it and be definitive. And is it an issue or is it not an issue? It's a question that right now still hangs for many people, and that's nonsense. As society, with 4,800 peer review studies, how long would it take us to deal with this again, properly and rationally? We're a different culture and a different society than just 10 years ago. We're more capable than any generation before. And we're more capable than any generation in the future because we have still this resemblance of, you know, of what a human is. Like, uh, if a UFO was to come down here right now and take our DNA, they'd be like, what the hell is that? That's not a human. What the fuck is that? 65,000 chemicals. What the frig? Look at all the GMO. He don't even got his own DNA in his toes. We're not even a human species anymore. I mean, you want to go down and look at Fallujah? Go take a trip down to Fallujah. You really want to get it? Where 80% of the babies are born just a lump of flesh from the depleted uranium? From the dirty bombs we fired into that country, 2.25 million a month out of the 5 million a month that you fired, did you get 11,000 Taliban? Right? If you want to see what low level radiation, background radiation, when it's speeded up a little tiny bit, looks like, well, that, that would be a prime example. 
but we got it already speeded up and it's coming our way. Now it just takes a few years to work its magic, but all the indications are there 100%. But we need to know how deadly that plume is coming, how much fish is left in that ocean. We need to know where all that wreckage is coming and where it's going. We need to know, you know, what kind of distress that ocean is in. And we can't trust a single person in the academic community because they all want to talk about bananas. They all want to talk about iodine-131. None of them wants to talk about uranium and plutonium, and that's what the reactors are made of. They're not made of bananas. They're not made out of the uranium that's natural to the ocean. They're not made out of the junk that they always talk about, the potassium-40, which has nothing to do with E equals, e equals mc square. And so why are they uh, hiding just the simplest stuff? Why don't you try to always trick you and never mention the words iodine-129, which has a 15 million year half-life, and only wants to mention the iodine-131 that can't exist without iodine-129, right? But it is only got an eight-day half-life, so it'll all be gone. But it won't, sir, ma'am. What about iodine-129? Shut up, that's how kind of talk, right? Not on my watch. Not on my rationality that the truth is superior to your bullshit, your manipulations. Uh, it destroys your, every foundation that the system has out there. The truth annoys, you know, bludgeons the false paradigm when people hear it. And that's why they don't want anybody to hear it. Because it snaps people back to reality and makes them question more. And it don't take long after that to realize the whole bloody ship is sinking and your one's going to be left behind. Right, to keep you in this illusion that they'll take care of you. Yeah, you just stay right there. We'll come back and get you. Don't you worry. And uh, that's because they're the most, you know, they're inbred for their jobs. Right? They're the, the daughters and the sons and the aunts and the uncles of the last sack of shit that had that job and destroyed people's lives. And it's all about stealing and looting the system. And that has, that's ending, whether they realize it or not, because when they never told us about all this cancer and the constant threats from the ocean, and they try to marginalize it, try to equate it with radon, try to equate it with plastic utensils, try to equate it with bananas or the background radiation that's indigenous to this planet, means they're in desperate uh, heart attack mode to come out and do stuff like that. And that's been accelerating. But we have to take it to another level. We have to ignore them in the near future and just keep coming out with the reality. And But we need more than that. We need action. And the only thing that's going to bring action is the factual information. And like you say, ultimately, what would you want? What would you rather have, you know? Would you rather have a 300 foot boat out there with cameras, with with people that you thought you, you felt you could trust, getting accurate readings, and when they say, hey, this is bad, look, that's a dead whale, and they put the camera on it, and they say, look, and here's all the dead stuff we found today, or here's all the life we found today, right? Maybe there's hope. Maybe that's worth a lot more to me, tell you what. Because I know what's supposed to be there. I dove that coastline for 14 years, that 26,000 islands, for up to 100 days straight at a time. And so I know all these places. I know what's there. I'm on that ocean floor for six hours a day. I know the life that's down there quite well. Right? And if that's missing, that won't be hard to find. And if it's bad, we need to be able to build drones and send drones out there. Because it's going to be too dangerous for humans. This job is not... Just because you can't stay here don't mean you can't send out uh, drones. Don't mean you can't send out blimps and get data, get information, get footage. So you can rally this planet to deal with it. Doesn't that sound like a better way to go about it than to sit there with your thumb up your ass and say, I die in 131, gone in eight days, shut up. Fear mongering. Hey, what about the uranium? That's fear mongering. What about the plutonium? That's fear mongering. 
What about the cesium when it's found? Fearmonger, there's, there's 30 times more striking than 19. Fearmonger! Shut up! El Qaeda! Or do I just sit here and just blog? Hi, guys! I read another article. Pretty freaking good! Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. They're live streaming from the middle of the ocean saying, Shit! There's life everywhere! Yay! Or there's death everywhere. Let's get busy. See, that's what I want. I want the truth. I want the straight up. And I want to see that big pile, those millions of tons of debris. And I want to, I want to be able to measure the radiation on that. Now, whether I do something like that or not is a whole different story. But that's my vision that has to be done. That somebody will do this or has to do that. It's irresponsible to let uh, CNN or BBC or anybody like that be um, our lighthouse, you know. They, they don't have... The, I mean, BBC, there's over a thousand children were raped and molested on their property. Why would you ever want to watch them? Why should you ever trust them? Why should you throw eggs at them every time you see them? I don't know. Why don't you? They're scum of the earth. And when they say, why did you throw eggs? You say, well, they, they raped a thousand children on their site. And then they've done everything in their power to hide it. And they all got cushy jobs. The ones that participated. The one that done the raping too. That's what it was all about. Bring them in there. So the upper management of BBC could rape the children with Jimmy's, for, that Jimmy Savile uh, purveyed for them. That's what it was all about, folks. Right? They weren't letting them there just to have a good old time by yourself. And so when, why can I, why should I trust him? So I think, you know, ultimately I'm coming to the realization that, you know, it's not only all the way, it's a lifetime that I'm committing to, to, to dealing with this and to flushing it out and making sure that everybody knows to get out of the way or stay with the two. Because, uh, you, you know, I'm going to have to start buying up all of these academic studies right I can't trust the system because they want to give you the studies that they want to give you and then you don't learn nothing you don't have a chance but I mean you're talking about and that's what I'll be doing but I mean that's what you're talking about you got no choice now to get you got to get that information so you can satisfy not only yourself but you can have all the pieces for the puzzle right and if I'm not willing to do that then what's the sense of what I'm doing you know, if not willing to go all as all out to get to the bottom of it and make sure everybody has the same ability and, and opportunity to be as informed as a, a, better than any other possible way and access to it, right? And that's why I got that studio. That's my hopes for that studio is that I can put together a labor of love, of a work of a lifetime. A legacy uh, for the future generations to help them try to recover from the carnage, right? I don't want the next generation to look at me and call me a fucking bastard. You bastard, look what you've done. Because that's what I'm doing to the last generation. I'm saying, you bastards, look what you've done. I don't want the next generation to say, why didn't you freaking stand up? That never will be me. I don't care. Uh, that will not be what I leave behind because that's not right. And that is my obligation as a citizen of the planet, period. Right? Not, not to have a mockery of the system, but to have a system that is, uh, can, can deal with what we got there. We, we already had that, we, and we have to take that. And now, away from the dummies that destroyed it, that hit everything on us, they're no longer got any power. They're no longer in control. They're they're looting the system for themselves. They knew a lot of this long before we did, and they kept it to themselves in the hope they would get a pension. They didn't care they were poisoning their own loved ones, their own spouses, their own children, their own brothers and sisters and aunts and uncles and nephews and nieces and their grandparents, their own parents, their siblings. They don't care. That's how greedy and, and destructive these actual people are. These people actually are. Is that they will poison their own. 
right? Because they'll just keep saying, oh, it's 131. And that doesn't work no more. They can say it's bananas. That doesn't work no more. They can say it's natural indigenous background radiation of the ocean. You say I can take a bath in it every day. It's got nothing to do with uranium-234 and 235. Right? Fuck. They haven't got a chance, see? Because that was the arguments they always used. They can say potassium-40. You say, what the fuck has that got to do with E equals MC square? Shut up, boy. That's what you say to these people. Shut up. What a dummy. You never give them an inch. You never give... You never... They walk back an inch, you push them back two more. You don't take it from them ever again. I'm not taking it. Well, I'm so sick of that one. That's the law they've been using. That's what I've been watching and listening to for years. That's what drives me over the deep edge and gets that person into a folder. It's because they said that. And because that's another monster. Right? And that's what Thunderfoot done last night. That's why we done that video. That's what he's done in all of his videos. He comes out with this routine. Right? How many um, how many women did he rape when he was growing up was a thought that I had many times yesterday when I was watching his stuff. Dirty bugger, man. He's a disgusting... He knows what he's saying. Right? He's a, he's a sick, um, maniacal, useful uh, creature. That's all he is. He's not a human like me or you. He's anti-human. He thinks he's uh, on the side that's going to get him the best out of it. But he's going to find out that people will never forget him or forgive him for his retardedness, you know, for his taking advantage of people that sought him out because he's supposed to have a degree. I can never say how, how strongly I feel about people like that, that uh, they're, they don't act like humans, why should we bother treating them like humans, right? If they were doing a book sign in my area, I can guarantee you they won't forget me, because I'll make it a point, and there's a lot of ways you can do it. Hi Terry, hi Miss Milky, Miss Milky, do a little dance for Miss Milky, everybody say, Dan, why do you always do that for Miss Milky for? Well, first off, none of your business. Second off, I'll tell you anyway. Third off, there's a person who done nothing to you. Done nothing to me outside of, shared me with every one of his subscribers repeatedly and begged them to come at least check me out. Right? For what? Well, because that was an opportunity to get somebody else out there. And she done that with everybody else out there. And they put all the time, energy, and effort. And so I admire that. And so I do a little dance when I see Miss Milky because she's been through hell and back. And I respect that. And Huma, and we got Terry, we got Sydney, we got Mike. Dana loves being. We're winding down, folks. Pedro, Stacy, Anderson, Angela. Hi, Angela. Well, you should enjoy things because now you don't fall for their game anymore, Angela. Right? You should be proud of yourself because you don't fall for the game no more. You can't be fooled anymore, right? And it's pathetic to you now, right? You should be very proud of that. And everybody else, too. Missing Sky, Mike, um, Lunar, thank you, Miss Milky, Pasha, Gary, Terry, Ketzer, Oh, we're moving pretty fast here. <laughs> I can't keep up with it. Hang on. Standing foot. See, I get a few. Uh, Sergeant. Automaticity. I has got to have one. Make is looking. DC. Babu. Heads from Pa. Albert. Mickey. I say. I almost. Damn it. So the stream worked all night. I tried to stream four times a day from the new studio, right? And then the fifth, one of those streams went up apparently, but I can't find it. And then the next stream kind of worked, almost worked, but we got a little bit. At least we got a little tiny bit. Everybody's talking in the background. Everybody takes a break when I goes live. 
because <laughs> they weren't talking that much when they were working and painting. And so I set everything up and I was like, perfect. And just as I was about to go live that time, because I had all these other problems, everybody was straight to her. And I just like, I don't even care anymore, click. Fuck it. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Well, well, we got a little video, even though it was chaos moments, not anymore. Sydney. Uh, T. Cal Callis, Sergeant York. And like you say, tonight I was fantasizing about doing things right, doing things proper, and just to get it out there, that off my chest, that that's how I feel. I don't know what might happen, but Baba, I hope something, you know, like that should happen. That's what we need. How much time do we have is the big question. What can we accomplish is the next question. That's stuff I'm going to have to work out in my mind. Richie, thank you. That's stuff I'm going to have to work out in my mind. Fukushima's revelations. Neona. Oh, Neona left another message. Dana, please unblock Mr. Henry. Now he pissed me off. Uh, he can make another account. It better be good next time. Uh, let me see. That was important today that I put out a video and everybody get a good start on, an, on a fresh studio where everything would change, where you can interview people. And that hurt my feelings today to say that to me. So, look, I'm just, you know, I'm doing this whether anybody's here or not, okay? I'm here. Because I get it. I understand it. I'm educated. I'm educating myself every day. And... I'm sharing that in the hopes that the right people are going to find it, and uh, that's all I'm, that's all I can do, right? And then try to bring something subjective to it. Try to leave the conjectures out of it. And this is something I've been doing for many years, right? For many many years now. And this is extraordinarily important. It impacts everybody I love. It impacts everything I ever thought. And it impacts the future of every species on this planet, particularly the Pacific Ocean, which I am passionately uh, intimate with for, for many, many years. And that I'm, I am truly heartbroken, right? That is truly heartbreaking for me. And anybody knows a lot about me over the last number of years um, understands that part of me, right? That the ocean is extraordinarily special to me. That's, I have an amazing relationship with that thing, creature. Love and hate, uh, but all respect, utter respect. And the, and the concept of that dying is extraordinary. And so that's going to die at the same time. We'll see you folks tomorrow night. My battery's down to just two minutes because I forgot to plug it in tonight. <laughs> so I got off my train of thoughts. All right, we'll catch you folks tomorrow. We'll have a lighter side to it. Might get another stream from the studio tomorrow. Another quick look this time. Maybe we'll pick the camera up and look around a bit. I was afraid everything was going to fall apart. And maybe there won't be so many people talking. But if not, I'll be back tomorrow anyway, regardless. Thanks, folks. Appreciate it. We'll see you tomorrow night.